The topic of today is network evangelism. And, you know, I think one of the points I'd like us to focus on is, is the reality, if we can come to terms with this, that most unbelievers, they have no interest in, in joining you this Sunday at your church. Um, whether it's online or physically, they have no interest. Uh, that, that's plain to see. Because if they were, then we'll see different results, different attendance, wouldn't we? You know, simply offering as well a, a good product, um, it's, it's really not enough in this, in this time that we live in, this post-Christian world. And it really does not matter, you know, um, how cool your, your, your venue is, um, how good your music is, how tasty the coffee and donuts, if you have such things, <laughs> how, how, how good that is, or how hip and trendy your pastor may, 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 may look. You know, unbelievers who, who do not show up, uh, you know, that, that, that's for a very good reason. They are really not interested. Now, the unbelievers that, that do show up, uh, well, I'd like to suggest that's because someone has, has actually befriended them beforehand. You know, somebody has actually invited them from outside the church walls. Um, you know, most outsiders, you know, that they aren't just, you know, waking up saying, oh, you know, I think the coffee is really good in that church. I'm going to go along and have a taste. No, they couldn't give a blast, actually. Um, and that's the fact, <laughs> you know, then they're not saying to themselves, mm, you know, I, I think that, you know, the music over there is really great. So I'm going to go and check it out. You know, I'm going to go and visit. They're not thinking like that. For us in our ministry, um, amongst our network, you know, as kingdom builders, you know, we always have to emphasize, in fact, overemphasize evangelism. Um, and, it, you know, it's a challenge for us to be both missional and also pastoral at the same time. You know, there's a real balancing act there that needs to be done. And that's a, a real tension that exists, you know, from the founding of, of any ministry, any church, actually. That balance between missional and pastoral. There was one church uh, planter who recently told me that, you know, I've only just got started and I'm already having shepherding issues. And, um, well, I'm not surprised, I'm not surprised at all. But, you know, if a church is to flourish, then be under no um, mistake. Evangelism has to be prioritized. If the proclamation of the gospel must be the central um, part of, of the life of the church. Now, you know, it's interesting to look at, you know, the models of evangelism that are there right now in your churches and around the world. Now, in, you know, years gone by, there are are largely two forms, I think, of evangelism that have been most common, without a shadow of a doubt. And the first one would definitely be the, the event evangelism, uh, you know, um, where people are coming along to hear a speaker and hopefully the speaker will share the gospel. Um, and of course, the other type would be the cold call evangelism, whether that's, you know, doing a mission on the streets, knocking on somebody's door, um, just, you know, going in cold, that type. And, and you know, uh, when people hear evangelism today, they often think of, you know, either big events, uh, crusades, or literally the door-to-door the -door outreach. And I really believe that um, they're both fantastic. We've we got to keep going. Keep on organising events, keep on knocking on doors, keep on, you know, going in cold, <laughs> you know, using whatever methods, you know, we must never be in the business of, of, of uh, diminishing or rubbishing any particular method that is out there. Um, I think the Lord Jesus has used both of these approaches and in some contexts, you know, they continue to be very, very effective. You know, let's keep keep going with these these two approaches. However, in other places, particularly in many post-Christian contexts, I think these approaches are often less fruitful. Uh, for example, um, I, I've had a meeting um, earlier this week um, that it just wasn't an event. I was actually invited online as a video uh, uh, guest uh, to a meal. It wasn't an event where coming, somebody was coming to, as a speaker. I was just coming along as a guest to somebody's meal in the Middle East. Um, you know, I don't view that as an event. That was very much like just going to somebody's home over a meal in the Middle East. That, that's really as good as it can get in that particular area where I was, I was speaking. Uh, and also going in cold would 
be taken very badly in that particular country. That's a closed country to Christianity. Now, I don't want to insinuate that we should reject these two approaches. We really should not. Uh, I endorse them both heavily. But I want to highlight another approach that has a historical precedent, a biblical uh, precedent, um, one that is both culturally appropriate and also personally achievable. And that's network evangelism. Network evangelism. Now, again, I'm always very cautious with these terms. You know, I've heard of such silly terms like friendship evangelism. Um, I, I, in fact, I know somebody who's written a book called that. And hey, great. Um, friendship evangelism, I'm sure, must be great. Um, but if we're trying to suggest that making a friend is evangelism, no, sorry, it's not. Evangelism is the proclamation of the gospel. Um, now we're going to be talking about network evangelism. Well, Please remember, just making a network, well, that's not evangelism. Evangelism is simply the proclamation of the gospel. We must never forget that. That's our plumb line um, for everything that we do. Um, and what I'd like you to know about network evangelism, it, you know, it, it isn't an event. It's not a program. It's not something that you only do on Tuesday nights or at 6 p.m. Or, or Saturday mornings at 9, 9 a.m. or whatever at the supermarkets. No. Uh, network evangelism, it's actually probably more of a lifestyle that includes both of the other two. It's about living with gospel intentionality in the everyday rhythms of life. It's done among the people who fall into your current network, your current web of relationships that you are, you are part of. And I think, you know, when planting a, a, a church, network evangelism becomes a practical way to emphasise how every member can live as a missionary, you know, and there, there must be an atmosphere of expectation, of course. There's really, there really has to be that every member of our church will always have, come on, surely two or, or four uh, people in the, uh, what I call the incubator. There surely must always be two or four people in our evangelism incubator. Um, you know, a, a force field in which people are being prayed for. People are being given literature. They're being brought to, you know, church or, or other events and so on. And so please think about this for a moment. You know, w w why network evangelism? Well, well, well first of all, it's, it recognises the sovereignty of God. You know, it, it, I think it does re, um, develop that mindset that every person in our sphere that is in our life, whoever they are, and we'll talk about that in a minute, they all matter. Every one of them is so important. And it helps us to remember that, that God has us living in this time and this place and this history surrounded by particular, you know, people, uh, you know, uh, uh, that, that are being put in our paths we got to remember that and also additionally you know I think network evangelism you know as I said it has a historic precedence uh, you know social networks are, are the basic mechanism through which today all conversations are taking place this meeting right now you know again social networking you know most conversations are, are not produced by professional missionaries conveying a new message but by rank and file members who share their faith with their friends and relatives. And, you know, I think that uh, the, this principle that conversions spread through show, social networks is quite consistent with the fact that the early followers of Jesus shared many family ties. It's all family, community related you know, long-standing associations. And also that's what made things quite difficult. If you remember, you know, Peter struggled in the place where he was. Um, and of course, the Lord Jesus was sending him to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. But he did ask him to start in Jerusalem, his own place where everybody knew him. People knew all of his mistakes, his weaknesses. Tough place. That's why the hardest place for you to evangelize will be exactly where you live, exactly where you work. Uh, in your family, the toughest places, the easiest places, I would argue, the ends of the earth, 
because they don't know you there. And when you finish sharing, well, you can always come back home, can't you? Or turn off from the Zoom meeting. <laughs> um, but you know what? The real nitty gritty of evangelism, it happens right on your doorstep. And uh, it's good to remember, you know, this, this very important fact. And although, you know, as I say, you know, the very first Christian converts in the West may have been, you know, by full time missionaries. We know that, you know, the conversion process soon became self-sustaining as new converts accepted the obligation to spread their faith. And, and they did so by evangelizing their immediate circle of, of people that they knew, their immediate intimate, intimate, intimate relationships. So did you see that? You know, the movement advanced because new converts accepted the obligation to spread the gospel with their own circle of, of everyday influences. Don't, remember, don't forget that. And I think, you know, in addition to that, you know, um, network evangelism, it also promotes, you know, faithfulness and, and pace, patience. Evangelistic methods, you know, often involve on the spot presentations, don't they? You know, we've got all the, 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 the tools that we're always recommending and we continue to recommend evangel cubes, booklets, tracts, any methods, putting tracts in magazines, whatever, learning a, a, a narrative, memorizing it. Um, but keep in mind all the time, please be challenged by this. Um, all these methods they also can at times become very um, impersonal as well. And that's what always bothers me. So when I'm in meeting a new person or, or somebody who's not new, um, I'm not sure I always want to, you know, go back to the, the memorized narrative. You know, that's why conversationally intertwining the gospel in what I'm saying, it's so important to go that extra mile because that's what's showing that tender, loving care to this person that really matters. God loves that person that you're talking to so much. And, and so should we. We should stop treating people like packaged meat to, as projects um, and start really treating them as, as a soul that our Jesus laid down his life for and loves so much. Um, you know, and I think we've got to, you know, be challenged by this, you know, let, let's, uh, let's move away from this whole mentality of generating numbers. Oh, another person. Oh, so many people responded. Oh, you know, we, we are numbers generated, aren't we? Always very results driven as opposed to obedience driven. You know, we're sharing the gospel. We should be because we are being obedient to, to God. It's, it's out of love. That's what makes us different from Jehovah's Witnesses or Mormons that have to almost meet a quota. That's why they got to knock on the door and like, you know, here's something for you. I don't want to take anything from, from you, but here's, here's the agenda. Listen to me. I'm not listening to you. And off they go. Door number two and door number three. And they keep a log. <laughs> no, you know what? Uh, you know, we, we we're to love our community, our network. We're not here just to check a box or appease our guilt and then move on. We, we're, we are all about valuing people. Amen. And so, uh, you know, when when you are reaching out to the people, the people that you also that you're seeing regularly, uh, it demands a whole lot of faithfulness, doesn't it? A whole lot of perseverance. And you I think that, you know, it's important that you and I can can do the, the pre evangelism. Answer questions, you know, slowly and and gradually watch defences go down in people as we're as we're dialoguing and engaging. And hopefully, by God's grace, we will see our, our friend, our family member, our, our co-worker, our neighbour receive the Lord Jesus. And, and that's really all we want to see. We just want to make sure that they do not get to hell. We got to make sure we got to make sure they get to heaven. Come on. You know, didn't Charles Spurgeon say, well, if they got to go to hell, then good. At, le at least let them climb over our bodies to have to get there. If that's where they're insisting on going. And uh, I agree with him wholeheartedly. Let's do everything we can just to put the message in the most professional, loving way to people. And so my question to you is, who is in your network? Now, of course, all this stuff, you know, already. But but, you know, uh, somebody once said, we we. 
when we learn, truly learn, we are putting into into words what we already know and or what we already should know. And I think there's some truth in that. You know what I'm going to talk about now. You know who's in your networks, but let's really put it to the bring it to the surface so we can highlight this and stop avoiding it and covering over it and skipping over it in our life. Um, because we could organize our, our web of relationships within five categories. You know, our, and, and I'd like you to really please focus on this um, and take it away as a sort of homework, a personal challenge, a personal um, devotional exercise this week where you can literally, literally make a piece of paper. I mean, I know we've come up with these lists before. Churches have over the years, you know, make a list of your family members, make a list of your co work colleagues. But come on, let's stop being so nominal and, and token about this. You know, we want to break down into familial network, geographical ne network, our vocational networks, our recreational networks, uh, and even our commercial networks. Now, what do I mean by this? You know, let's start thinking, who are these people? You know, we've spent months trying to train and equip and encourage you all in how to evangelize and what is the gospel. But now, who are the people that we are now going to be focusing on and targeting? Who are the people that are in our networks that we cannot overlook because now we value them? Yeah. Well, the first one will be familial network. You know, obviously, the people in our family, you know. Who are those people that really have not committed their life to Christ? Immediately, straight away, that list should be immediately there. You know, their names, their locations, everything about them, your relationship. Is it strained? Is it difficult? Is it completely broken? Right. There's, you know, we're going to look at some action points of how to tackle that. They could be distant cousins. They could be people that are not actually blood related to you. They could be people that, you know, can be considered as you're treating them almost like family. These types of, you know, family people, whoever they are, uncles, aunts, children, brothers, sisters, mothers, parents, the lot. The list is endless. You know, come up with some names that you're going to be focusing on that you're going to start making it your business to share the gospel with them before you die. How about geographical network? You know, the people in your, your neighborhood, you know, um, th these are people, your next door neighbors, you know, sometimes our neighbors, it's interesting, but it can be like reaching the ends of the earth. You know, you sometimes don't even look at each other or there's those other neighbors. Yep. You love each other. First name basis. Wonderful. But what about the ones that are not, you know, what's the strategy to reach the people in your geographic network? Um, a third area would be vocational, of course. You know, the people at your workplace or like if you're a student, the people in your study place. They could be colleagues, they could be um, people below you, above you, managers, anybody, ex-colleagues. And then the next area would be recreational network. OK, we've got a picture here of people jogging. You may not be a jogger. That's OK. But what, what do you do? When you're relaxing, even if you're sitting in a coffee shop, having a, a coffee, a tea, whatever, a glass of water, you know, they're the people that you tend to meet on a regular basis, the recreational network. And finally would be the commercial network. You know, we're talking about shopping. <laughs> you know, these are people that you're going to be meeting in the shops. They could be complete strangers walking past you. The people serving you at the till could even be your friend who's with you, who could also be a stranger as well to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, you can start by identifying at least, you know, five people. Would that be too much? Or, or if that's too much, we'll start somewhere. Start with one person, two people. Come on. You know, in each of these five areas, family, familial, geographical, vocational, recreational and commercial. Uh, and, you know, if they're low in one area, area, then that's OK. Increase the numbers in another area. You know, we're not trying to skive off our, our responsibilities and duties early here. <laughs> you know, we're, we're really trying to take responsibility. Now, what are we going to do in trying to reach these people? I'm just going to share these quick pointers and then we'll pray and just wrap up and, and then maybe we can spend some time really focusing on this task. Well, you know, how will you reach out to these different people that you've come up with on your list? Well, number one, share the gospel. Share the gospel, share the gospel, share the gospel with every one of them. You know, look for various places where you can sow the seed of the gospel in their life. Talk about your faith. 
Let your friend know that you are part of a church and, uh, uh, and see if they've got any questions. You know, listen out for them. Don't, don't be so worried about what you're going to be telling them, what, what narrative you're going to be, you know, downloading. <laughs> you know, you know, look at their questions, understand them. Let your friend know, you know, uh, you know, that, that you're ready to listen. You listen to their problems with real concern. Uh, and if they have no problems, well, listen at their self-sufficiency again with real concern. And seize the opportunity to address the problems with the gospel, the hope of the gospel, you know. Sh share some of your own struggles and talk about how you deal with them in light of your faith. You know, somebody asks them, you know, what do they believe? And let them talk, let them talk. And even if they're dissing Christianity, let them feel free to do it in your presence, knowing that they're not judged by you, that they're loved by you. Not that they're going to just say they've got to walk, walk on eggshells around you. May that not be the case. You know, if, if there's anybody who's a bit prickly in the room, I think it's probably people like me. I, I, I tend to have that abrasiveness sometimes, uh, especially with Christians. Is <laughs> with the non-Christians, I tend to try to be a lot more softer and because and, uh, I, I think I, I just feel such compassion. I do not want them to go to hell. That's my continual motivator. And in, in addition to that is that I love Jesus. He saved me. My goodness, how, how can I have the audacity not to tell other people? So there you are, share the gospel. You know, another um, suggestion for you is please pray for these people that you're adding to your list. Pray for them. You'll be surprised what, what happens when you begin to pray for people in, in, that, are, that God's put in your path. And, you know, maybe you and I would experience that, you know, that joy that C.S. Lewis once spoke about. You know, didn't he say, um, I have two lists of names in my prayers. Those whose conversations I pray and those of whose conversations I give thanks. The little trickle of transferences from list A to B is a great comfort. He was very clear about these two lists. And we need to be praying for, for those people that, that are, are, um, need to be converted and those who are converted. Those who are saved and those who are not saved. So share the gospel. Pray for them. You know, another thing you can do as well on a regular basis is invite them. Invite people and be, be persistent. Invite, 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 invite. You know, it's all for the gospel, isn't it? It's worth it. Invite them over to dinner, you know, to play sports, to have a cup of coffee, to go for that run maybe. Maybe you need the run as much as they do. You know, go to a movie. You know, come to church. You know, because every interaction you have with them, yes, you could do it by yourself. You could do it with a Christian person. Isn't that much more pleasant? But no, come on. The more exposure you are having to those non-Christians, the more likely they might be exposed to your Christ. Uh, you know, serve people. You know, identify any way that you can bless a person. You know, those people in your network. What can you do for people? Can you babysit for them? You know, can you pick up their groceries? Now is a good time as any. There might be still people in your area that are still, you know, even when lockdown is lifted, they may still be distrusting and want to stay at home. Offer to do their groceries. Give them a gospel tract. You know, friends, cut their grass. I don't know. Um, I don't think I want to cut their grass. I've got hay fever, but I'd rather do maybe some of the other options. <laughs> you know, see what you're ready to do and give it a go. And, and final point I want to say to you is be in the habit of always giving to people. I've got a very dear friend who, uh, who was called home to be with the Lord a few years ago. And um, it was their anniversary of passing away uh, just the other week. And, and their daughter made a comment that, you know, what they always remember about their mother is that they always, always had something to give them all the time, whether it's a, a sweet, a piece of cake, a piece of food or something. They, you know, they would see their, their, their daughter and, yeah, that's for you. <laughs> you know, it didn't always have to be like, you know, helping them with their big life problems. They was always in a habit of giving them things all the time, putting something in their hand. I think that's why I love gospel tracts so much, because I love to give. <laughs> I love it. It's just lovely to bless somebody. And, um, you know, 
ask people, you know, um, you know, have you read this book or, or this article, um, you know, or, you know, have you listened to this sermon or this podcast? You know, um, can I give you this booklet? And you don't have to talk about what's in it. It's very, very simple activity. Uh, and you can just who knows what conversation can come out of it. You know, and, and so I really pray that God, you know, that God will really use um, saints like you and me, um, you know, who, whose love um, for the Lord Jesus overflows, um, you know, to lead people that are outsiders of the faith into the faith. As we begin to live with gospel intentionality in our everyday networks. And so please, uh, again, I just want to uh, ask you, please remember those those networks uh, and, and let's pray now. Dear Lord Jesus, we love you very much indeed. And we just want to thank you so much for your amazing love for us. Again, Lord, when we just uh, consider how you planned us. You've given us a name. You've numbered the hairs on our heads. You, you, you know our past, our present, our future. Your love for us is, is, is unconditional. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have made a way for us to, to, to know you as our Lord and our Saviour. My Lord Jesus, I thank you for each one of us that have such a testimony. And now I want to pray, Lord, that in the lives that we all live, in different places apart around the world, different situations and contexts. Please help us, Lord Jesus, to, to really organise uh, our relationships, maybe with the guideline, the pattern of, of those five categories. Help us, please, Lord Jesus, to, to, to focus now more than ever on our familial network. Help us, Lord, please, to bring to our minds, maybe to write it or type it, those people that are, are, are in our family, re blood related or not, that we will have their names on the tip of our tongues on, in every prayer that we'd be praying for them. My Lord Jesus, I want to pray that we'll focus on our geographical network. Please help us to now focus and be alert and awake to our neighbours strangers people in our local neighborhood the local stores uh the local petrol station people that walk by regularly that will go out of our way to reach out to into their lives say hi um those people in our geographical areas <clears throat> my lord Jesus, i want to pray that we'll we'll start thinking of our vocational network those that we work with study with or or or, or volunteer with these people these regulars uh, maybe maybe whatever reason it is that we we've not reached out to them maybe we've we've not connected maybe we you know we, we don't maybe like them or something help us to overcome these issues this rubbish and that we would start um loving people unconditionally that we'll start looking at people in the way you do looking them at them in terms of the, them being a creation and them having a future even in heaven or hell and that we would want them all to go to heaven Lord Jesus, help us to also look at our recreational network, people that we do hang out with. Lord, I remember the story of, of that, that friend I know who, who shared a car journey uh, with another workmate locally. And they traveled to work for over 20 years. <laughs> and yet they were both Christians and none of them had even realized that because they never once spoke about their faith. And yet they discovered later when they, they met at that meeting that we had, well, I pray that we'll have less of those situations because we are vocal, that we are having those conversations, that we'll make it known, but in a loving way, that we are believers, but that we'll also be listeners, that we'll be, we'll be really um, effective evangelists. And my Lord, Jesus, also finally that, that commercial network, we all go shopping one way or another, even though so much of it is done online. My Lord, at the supermarkets, when we're going out to buy our T-shirt, <laughs> our socks, whatever it is, shoes, haircut, Lord, at the barbers, Lord, um, at the petrol station, all these places, whether they're people we know or don't know, the person that we see regularly, people that that value us as customers, that we would, we would also look at those opportunities, Lord, to, to share the gospel, to pray for them, to invite them, to, to, to serve them, and, and Lord, to always be armed with gospel tracts and resources to, to give to them. 
My Lord, I pray already for all these people that all of us now have already had names come to our mind. People. And I pray, Lord, for the salvation of every one of those today and that we may do something about it in this day and this coming week and for the rest of our lives. We pray in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.